Okay, good evening. FCAT's giving me the thumbs up. I can see the screen. Hopefully, uh, Jen and John, you can both hear me. So yes. I know this is working. Okay, yes. perfect. Perfect. All right, so we'll call the meeting in order with a quorum present at five after seven. Um, <clears throat> so we'll do a roll call of who's here. I'll start. Oh, no. Mr. Decker. President. Mr. David Potter here. Okay. Good evening, David. Adam Sokolowski. Alex. Uh, go ahead on the uh, screen. Jennifer Romillard here. Okay. John Staberski, present. Okay. All right. All right, uh, minutes from the last meeting, they've been, uh, I haven't read them. You want to uh, read them and then take it up later or? Well, well, well we, we didn't do. Yeah, I sent out a, a quite a few of them, just the lingering ones from last year and, um, any ones that I'm pretty sure we didn't approve yet with the changes having the um, YouTube link and so on. Yeah, I didn't see that there were so many myself. I, I saw there was maybe one additional one sent. That's the one I read. That's okay. Yeah, the, the most current one I think is critical, but I'd love to just clean them all up so we're all yeah, sure. Yeah, here's the, if you want to hand one down to Bob. Yeah. Okay. So you want us to take time and check this out and read it through? Absolutely. I'm sorry I can't hand one through the screen. Uh, do you have the uh, August 5th ones, Jen? I believe you, uh, John, you were not here. Um... Is that in the most recent email that went out, Alex, from Jen? Um, no. The one from Sue. The one from Sue. Okay, yeah, because those are the older ones. Or yeah, the one from Sue um, was from August, and then the ones from Jen are some of the older ones. Okay. I did. I did read the ones from Sue, I believe. I'm pulling them up now. Give me one second. Were these the ones that were revised? Um, because David wasn't there? No, this is the one after the last meeting, sorry. Yeah, I have them in front of me. I, I can vote on it if you would like. I can move if you so desire. Oh, okay, I'll entertain a motion for the minutes. For a motion to approve the minutes of August 5th. I second. Okay. Oh. Uh, we'll, uh, so for the scribe, the motion was made by David Potter to approve the minutes of August 5th. If someone ha has their Zoom on, you got to mute that because the back seat is not going to work out here. I think you were okay, Bob. Well, he, this, my voice was coming out of his iPad, too. 
I had mine. I had I mine. I thought it was I on. had mine. I... Yeah. <laughs> there you go, Bob. You're muted. That's what I thought I was. Okay, there but you, you have your volume. It's all the way down. That turns it all the way up. It's down as far as it goes. Okay. Um, well, then shut the volume off because I don't want to hear myself twice. I don't know how I shut the volume off. Well, we can move the TV closer if you want to look at it, or you can yeah, log. The I'll, I'll shut it off, bring the TV closer. I can't read what's there. I'll shut this down. Or you can move closer to the TV, come on this side. Yeah, you want to switch with me? Uh, it's bad luck. It's bad luck, okay. Bad luck. Um, all right, thank you. I don't think we can move the TV. All right, all right, all right. I think we're shut off. Okay. Uh, yeah, you should have to close your Zoom app on that. Um, I wonder if it's just because you're so close to it, but that doesn't, it shouldn't make a difference, right? Uh, I, it's not going to work for me. My hearing's pretty good, so. All right, so we have a motion that's been made and seconded on the meeting minutes from August 5th. All those in favor? Make some noise. Aye. Yes. Yeah, and I think because we're doing this hybrid, we got to do the name thing again. Yes. Bob Decker says. Yes, Bob yes. Decker. David yes, Potter, David yes. Potter. Yes, Adam Sekolowski. Yes, Alex Redder. Yes, Jennifer Remillard. For John, okay. uh, John, are you going to abstain? You weren't at the meeting? You were I wasn't at the meeting. Up? I don't think I should be voting. Abstain. Okay. okay. I, didn't, I didn't hear you call my name, so I thought you knew I shouldn't be voting on minutes yeah. I wasn't at. Right. Absent. Yep. Okay. Let's see here. I think we're shut off now. You think so? Thank you, Mr. Decker. I hope so. It's off. All right. We didn't have those when I I understand. I don't see any mail here. So the review of mail is taken care of. Uh, old business. Progress on procedures and paperwork filing with ZBA. Ms. Um, Remillard? So Alex and I haven't been able to meet in person, but we did want to um, ask the board a couple things with pertaining to um, the rules that we had presented in our outline last time. Um, we felt that some of these pieces would be beneficial. And I got a response back from some of the town staff regarding um, concerns, especially um, you know, the timing and receiving the documents, um, you know, not having all the documents provided from the applicants. Um, and they didn't seem to be opposed to having multiple applications. Um, if Alex is okay, I can share the rules of the Zoning Board of Appeals that we got most of the information from that we wanted to share. And I didn't know if this particular document could be, um, if the board could go back and forth on if they like the items or not, or if that is something that you would like me to forward out via email now, and then we could maybe uh, vote or get feedback on it um, at the next meeting. Mr. Chairman? Yes, Mr. Decker. I would like to get a copy of what, what uh, Jennifer and uh, Alex have, have have in mind. So we had our own wisdom and time and look through it and uh, see whether or not we agree or disagree or how we think it might work better. So the next time we do have a board meeting, we can actually talk about it. Well, I think that's what's going to happen. Um, they gave out some outline stuff last meeting um, and 
we can email it out and then Jen can email it out during the meeting. And I think that's not a violation of the open meeting law or leave it for the members um, at town hall here. And then we can put it on the agenda for October. Um, and then hopefully um, we can have the town hall staff that deals with this available to either be part of the meeting or not. If we, you know, we should take their, their input as well. How does that sound? I am happy to email this out um, to everyone now. Obviously, it does not have any of the changes that we would like to imply. It's just taking paragraphs from um, the rules. It's the City of Springfield CBA. We really liked the fact that they had some certain pieces, including a timeline definition, or yeah, the timing I think was from this one, or it might have been from Worcester. But I'll send out this one um, to everyone during the meeting and also the, I believe it was Worcester, was the other one with the rules that we liked um, from here. These were the two main ones that we took information from. Um, and you can also just gauge the, the information that's in here. We did not compile um, we didn't have the time to meet to compile our own um, document to present to you tonight. So I can, I'll send these out um, blind seed seed. So if anybody has any questions, it doesn't violate open meeting law if they send it directly um, to me, if I'm correct, right, Adam? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's definitely, I think that's the right way to go and we're doing it in an open meeting and then the documents will be available if anybody wants them. So, yeah, I believe, um, cause they can be uploaded to the web website, um, or I can share them now as well. Um, if that's something that needs to be done, you know, share them on screen so people can look at them briefly, but we're not really, we're not really voting on it or doing anything other than, looking it over before the next meeting. So then, then we shouldn't have to post it and we can post it next before the next meeting. Does that work or? I think that works fine with me. I would email it out and then, okay. you know, we'll keep it as an agenda item for next meeting. Um, and then hopefully between now and then, um, if people don't get it during email, if you give uh, Jen a copy, or sue a copy if someone wants to stop in and get a copy of it they can stop in and get a hard copy okay um all right so i don't know if i yes john sorry i didn't know if you had a question Mr. Chair? yes uh yes I, could i also be sent what was distributed at the last meeting because i did not get that and i did not see that Yep, I, I can send that out in this email. It's the outline. Um, and it was sent, it was, I think we did it in the, was it in August or was it July? I believe it was July. Yeah, so, um, two meetings, so it would be. Okay. It was, I, didn't, I, didn't, I haven't seen that yet. Okay. Um, David, I don't know if I have your email address. Well, how convenient. I just created one that I'd like to use uh, specific to business for the ZBA. So oh. um, do you wanna, before you give it out, do you want to do it after the fact or do you not care if it's out in TV land? Huh. Well, it's public anyway. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's all right. <laughs> Spam. Uh, so yeah, it's david.potter.zba at gmail. Okay, great. Thank you, David. So I've got Adam, Bob, Bernie, John, David, Alex, yours isn't coming up either for some reason. Oh, Here I we go. Later. I got it. It's your, it's your UMass one. Yes. Okay.
All right, I'm uh, sending out an email. It should be sent in just a couple of minutes. I think we're good there on that agenda item. Is any member of the public, we have one person here, want to say anything before we move on any further? If you do raise your hand, we'll do our uh, best to take that as quick as we can from the screen, from the Zoom. Okay. Uh, Number six on the agenda here is new business request for comment uh, from the planning board on uh, three separate bylaws. And I don't know if it's something that we should be commenting on as a board. Um, I'm inclined to agree with you, but uh, the chairman of the planning board wants to speak to us. So. Okay. We can uh, un unmute. Unmute. If we can, do I have to unmute? Oh, no, unmute. she should. You're good. Okay. Um, yes, I appreciate being here tonight and whether or not you discuss the proposed um, articles. I will mention that at the finance committee, they did um, have acknowledge after a beginning conversation that in fact, we're having our public meeting for the town or public yeah, public meeting, public hearing um, next Monday, the 13th. And following that meeting, there may be some changes to some of these articles, depending on the results of the public hearing. The Finance Committee um, elected to continue having discussion just as an informational discussion so that if in fact, since they want to be able to opine on the articles, um, they wanted to wait until they saw the final Final wording. I'm not sure how much, how many changes there will be, but just for your information as you deliberate whether or not you want to discuss. Thank you. Yes. I think the input for this whole change is to accommodate uh, one, uh, the Treehouse Brewing Company in particular. And it's you know somewhat uh, somewhat speaks to spot zoning, and I think if you're going to do a tourism district, it ought to start at the Waitley Line and end at Cheapside Bridge, the center of South Deerfield, around the common, three or four hundred feet, five hundred feet, should be included in it too. And uh, that if you're going to do the tourism. Uh, it needs to go all the way up through because old airfield is basically tourism and it, you know, tourism is there and uh, that's been their emphasis for 50 years or a hundred years. Right. And you should be, that area should be included too. I granted the Academy owns most of the land, but still there are other people that own land in between uh, that should be able to develop their property to their highest and best use. Uh, the other thing I think that should be done, is uh, if we're going to be doing all these things, it's maybe high time that we had a drive-in. Uh, if you want to get a hamburger, you can get a hamburger. If you want to get an ice cream cone, you can get an ice cream without getting out of your car, especially for the elderly. Uh, right now, you cannot get a... The only place that has a drive-in facility in town is Treehouse Brewing. There's no other, no other drive-in thing in town that I know of, unless you know something I don't know. And, uh, you know, I think we should be looking at some of those things, and uh, we haven't. And uh, I just want to, I mentioned the center of town of Route 5 and the drive-in. And those are some of the things that uh, people are interested in, you know, especially with the pandemic. They want to go get food or they want to get a prescription. I was at CBS in Hadley during Amherst University Drive today. I just drive up, tell them what I want, they hand me the prescriptions, and I go. People don't want to get out of their car and go. Uh, so I think that what's being presented has an awful lot of merit, but I don't think it goes quite far enough to take care of the rest of the town. And it's just 
basically been geared. I also understand that, and I haven't read the map that closely, but I understand that there's some stuff on Elm Street and North Street that are included, but the property behind it isn't. Uh, the uh, Berkshire Brewery property is not included, at least I'm told that. And yeah, that's why I say you should maybe be five or 600 feet around the town commons to make sure you're in. I would be opposed to uh, having it include the land that's uh, in the expedited permitting district. So uh, the other thing about this whole thing is the zoning board is gonna be less uh, interested in, in these things going forward if this passes because the, most of the authority is going to invest with the planning board, which is fine. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess the question at hand is, you know, as a board, you take... I don't think we should. I don't think we should. I don't think that as don't people... Think I would encourage any member of the public, member of any board, to go to the public hearing or submit their comments to the planning board and, and vet it that way. I just think that we're opening up a can of worms as a board, or we might not even have an agreement on if we want, let's say theoretically wanted to make a statement, we might not have a statement or an input that we could agree on. And then you could have a split board, and then that also, then it, well, then if you have an applicant come to us for another matter or a matter within these districts looking for, you know, relief of some of these laws, then you know, I think it might it might be a slippery slope. I, I <clears throat> it's the first time we've ever the board, as far as I know, has ever been asked to, to comment on a proposed change to bylaw. I know, and I don't think that input from any board is necessarily a negative thing at all. But I don't know if this is the proper form format for it. Can we ask some questions? Sure. Yeah, how, how does how does how do people on Zoom get recognized here? You raise your hand. Uh, it's been raised. It's just uh, you guys are talking back and forth with each other, and and uh, yeah. Why don't, why don't you take them? All right, uh, John Stavarsky, go ahead, John. Um, so I think it is a we. I think we need to hear what the bylaw is first and the proposed changes. i will be frank with you. I, I've just seen a few general things in the paper, and and I think it's appropriate for the zoning board to comment on matters that pertain to things that might come before it. I mean, we are, uh, we are the individuals that are supposed to be making the decisions on, on matters that come before us. And, and we certainly have the right and probably duty to the town to, uh, to let people know what we think about the proposal. Uh, but I don't think we can even make, I mean, for example, what happens if, uh, and I don't know what's in here, but uh, Mr. Decker had indicated that there was some weakening of the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals authority and interaction in the process. I mean, I think that's something we should speak to as to whether we believe it's appropriate or not, or whether we don't care. I mean, people are going to want to hear us, hear what we have to say at the town meeting. So I think before we even make a decision as to whether we should uh, uh, weigh in on this, we should hear it. We should hear what they are. For example, if it was Conservation Commission matters, that's so far out of our purview, we probably shouldn't be rendering opinions, but there, there could be things that are, that are in our purview that we, we may want to. So I think before we decide that we should hear from uh, the chair of the planning board as to what the proposals are and and then make a decision. It has been posted on the website um, and we I have a copy here and there's some in the town hall if you do need them. I'm welcome to uh, acknowledge the planning board chair after Ms. Remillard. She has her hands up if you want some further explanation. but. If in the proposed changes, and they could change as the chair of the planning board has already said there at the post public hearing, uh, uses will become by right. So they, if they become by right, then they don't have to come to us for a special permit. What comes by right? I couldn't hear you on that. It was didn't uh, come. The, the proposed bylaws change certain uses to by right from special permit. Okay. 
So if they're by right, then they only have to go through site plan review. They don't have to even come to us. Okay. Um, so that, so I'll acknowledge Ms. Remillard. Go, go ahead. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. So just to go over the concern Mr. Dacker expressed about the tourism, I thought this was only specifically to encompass what was on five and 10 because that the area for historic Deerfield um, has been known for tourism and, and that is in its own district. And this was to encompass um, more of South Deerfield all the way to the Waitley line. Um, and the other topic for Treehouse, the, the portico there um, for their phase one, I thought that was mostly implemented due to COVID, um, you know, and to be a precursor for that. And that was how they were still able to do business um, because they don't have, they didn't have a facility to go into to make a purchase, you know, that was approved. Um, am I wrong with that, with that understanding? Well, I mean, here's the question. It's kind of a gray area. And I mean, I think because they're a positive thing for the town, I mean, if the difference was that there's, that there's not a drive up window, drive up windows are not allowed. So if you drove up and they handed the beer out the window, that's not allowed, but right. a portico, if you had a portico for cheeseburgers, and you had a portico for prescription drugs, would that be allowed? I mean, I'm not the zoning lawyer, and I think, you know, I'm not against it. I think it's a great addition to the town, but I, you know, I'm not, you know, I think what they're doing is great. If someone, you know, wanted to do stakes, drive up stakes, I'm not against that either. So, mm -hmm. you know, but. Well, it, just, it just goes back to thinking about the process because I believe people have to order online. So they're not technically doing the transaction through the portico. It's just picking it up. Um, whereas the, a drive-through specifically would be waiting in line, paying and doing the transaction all in that location. Yeah, don't do that. I don't know you if don't that do gets that done. Anymore. I'm still talking. That's, I don't sorry. know if that has to go with, um, you know, the back and forth or whatever nuances and those small interpretations that could, you know, get uh, debated by the legal system. Um, but, you know, maybe that's something to consider moving forward when we do provide um, special permits, if there is something in there, if you continue, you know, obviously the town's people didn't want to have drive throughs so um, that's something that should be further evaluated, I think, moving forward. Um, so that way, if, you know, if we're going to not have drive throughs at all, we need to remain consistent. Mr. Chairman. Is she done? I... Yes. Are you? Yeah, I'm done. Uh, the other thing I wanted to point out is if I read the map correctly, uh, up on uh, Route 5 and 10, where Yankee Kennel has their warehouse and their office building, mm -hmm. that is not included in that whole area from what I can see, but I'm, my eyesight's not that good. And, you know, I just think that if we're going to do this thing, do it all the way up through Route 5 and 10 and make it fair to all the people that own property and whatever, so that they can develop their properties that are highest and best use. And here's the thing on, on uh, down there on North Street, or Railroad Street, uh, North Street. They, they get the first two parcels, and then after that, it's just uh, the other district, uh, small business. And, but they're carving out these two things here uh, into this district, and they're also carving in, uh, looks like the Yankee, uh, the, uh, the property that uh, includes... Uh, Cumberland Farms and uh, the other property to the south of it. If I read the thing properly, I don't know. Have you seen, David? Well, that's, that's the nature of my question, really. Go, go ahead. I don't. I don't. I don't might not yeah. have any answers I, here. I, I don't have the printout, but online, you know, I have something which is called the Tourism Overlay District. It's neither of these two. It's yeah. something with purple around, and then I have another one that's called SB. 
suggested overlay. Yeah, for your small business and then the entertainment. So I think the yellow encompasses most of it. It's, it's outlined. It could be two different colors. See? Right. And see, see how this is yellow and blue, and then this is yellow and red. So you got two districts there, and then this is overlaid with that. I'm not, how come these don't seem to match what I'm looking at here? Because I can even you might have a, this one check here. Check the dates. Oh, the dates. We may have date issues. So maybe we're getting the cart ahead of the horse. And, uh, oh, does, does they anybody have a, a map that looks like oh. this? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mr. Chairman, if I could add to that, when you have a moment. Okay, go ahead. We'll be happy to get up to speed, please. Thank you. I think this is a really valuable conversation on a number of levels. First of all, as far as the maps are concerned, um, you're absolutely right. There have been a number of additions, and in fact, I think there will be more. We learned when the planning board brought the verbiage of this article for public hearing on next Monday, we didn't realize at the time that we also had to have a separate article for the actual map. So in fact, tomorrow we're having a very quick meeting to have another public hearing on, the, on an actual map. That actual public hearing and, and final map most likely will be based upon the input from the public hearing on the 13th. So I think the conversations you're having tonight as well as um, the public comments that come on the night of the 13th will be very valuable as we do finally set a final map. So whatever map you're looking at might be different from the one that I've got here and from the one that's on the website. And that's just, I guess, unfortunate. As far oh, as- Well- mm -hmm, I'm very unfortunate actually. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> um, what's the time frame? Are they still trying to do this as a special town meeting in early October? October 5th, yes. I think I read. Oh. Uh, we have a question here. October 4th. October 4th. October 4th. Well, October 4th, yes. I don't know how they're going to be able to. That's like a snow fight. Well, and a special meeting warrant has to be posted two weeks in advance. So they have to close the warrant the week of the 18th of September. They're going to close it as soon as the public hearing is over. That's what they're going to do that following Wednesday night. That's what it looks like to me. Yeah. Which is a little uh, tricky as far as the map is concerned. But I think the discussion on the night of the 13th is really what will be crucial. If I can interject on my second thoughts, as you were talking about, you know, drive throughs and um, you know, if there are other zoning issues that uh, should be addressed, um, the planning board actually is trying to be proactive and also gather information from residents in terms of what, what do we need to do with updating some zoning bylaws. So um, although right, right now our, our drive-in food zoning, or our, I don't know, our drive-in zoning bylaws are separate from this tourism overlay district, um, if those are bylaws that we should, you know, that there's a belief that we should address, then we want to be able to address them. So I really appreciate hearing your ideas on, like you say, prescriptions, food, whatever. Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Decker. I think that the planning board might want to look at the items that say N on the table of use chart and change in, in particularly some to from N to SP, special permit, so that they can be accommodated later. But if they're an N, the zoning board doesn't have any authority to bend on most, most of those things. But if it's bent down for a special permit, the board can look at the facts and circumstances and make an informed decision to try to accommodate the landowners and what have you and the developers, et cetera. Well, right now, if somebody came in in the industrial zone and wanted a permit from the zoning board to establish a bar, they can't do it, okay? It's specifically N as to a bar in the industrial district, okay? And uh, if you change that to SP, it's going to solve most of the issues that 
are related to these zone changes. Just go look at it, and if you change them to SP, the board has some flexibility. Thank you. No, the you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I don't think we're at the point because we don't have all the facts and circumstances. We don't even have maybe the right map. We don't have a full board. We don't have. Yeah, that's cool. Well, we don't have the full board, and uh, I still think that. I would encourage members to make comments as individuals, but I think making a blanket policy comment ex at any point, but especially at this point in time without the finalized bylaw. And, you know, we knew that this was, I mean, that there's been bylaw discussions going on, but to create a big change at a special town meeting is also something that I think is, should be reserved for an annual town meeting. But, um, that's you know well outside of our purview. It's up well, that's that's correct. Um, Mr. Yeah, go ahead. I, I think that I would like to say that there have been times when our conversations have been about planning board purview and the design of bylaws. So I appreciate that they're looking for the comment and the feedback, and maybe it's not. Um, that, you know, that's where we want to go, but we have questions, and I think it's a, a positive development overall. Um, you know, it does afford us an opportunity to consider what might be, you know, we think might, might, you know, tie us up in some ways or, uh, you know, uh, cross over a certain line of, uh, of authority. And, you know, maybe we don't. We, it, I think you're correct in saying we don't have much to say at this time. We don't really know exactly. I think it's like. very productive to have the conversation. I don't know as if putting something in writing, a request from comment that this is the stance of the Zoning Board of Appeals, yeah. is, I, is necessarily I the right thing to do on on these. And this, we're just talking about one. There's several. Yeah, and the other follow-up, just to say, I don't know that I saw anything on the solar bylaw. So was that in a? It's an amendment replacement. I. Do we do we have that here? I have but Want me to introduce it while you talk? Please. <laughs> sure. Thank you. Um, at the June town meeting, when we did pass new solar bylaws, we did um, the solar. Those solar bylaws primarily were for medium and large scale, and there was a very strong request that we do more to address small scale solar. Um, in the meantime, there were some numbering issues and some formatting issues. And so there was the recommendation uh, from town administration as well as uh, town council that we um, vote, that we, we submit um, new bylaws in their entirety. But, and that's what this is. It replaces the current bylaws that were approved in June. However, um, really the primary changes um, really do just, well, are, are, are really definitional, almost definitionally only in relation to small scale. And the, the, the most mm, uh, interesting piece of that that is generating a fair amount of comment is what should be the largest size small scale that we would allow. So at this point in these bylaws, we have that as 660 square feet, um, recognizing that after a public hearing, we can make things less restrictive, but not more restrictive. So this is perhaps the, the most restrictive we would have. And there's a question as to whether or not we would, after hearing public comments, um, make that small scale definition somewhat larger. But in general, you'll find that um, if you look on the website and see the changes or the warrant when you receive it, um, you'll see that most of the changes in solar really are either definitional or clarification other than that piece of the um, 660 square feet. Question. Yeah, go ahead. So that, uh, Annalie, that square footage, um, 
is is that an increase in what was originally conceived or is that a decrease? Um, that's actually um, an interesting question, David, because um, what was put through in June, it appeared as if uh, small scale could go up to 10,000, but in fact, there still was elsewhere in the bylaws that nobody sort of captured uh, a definition of 660. So in essence, it truly is the same as what is in our bylaws right now, because we never struck it in June. And, and it, oh, is, is there any um, relationship be, from the square footage to the output, the power, or, you know, the... <clears throat> That was one of the changes that we made because the kilowatt hours seem to be a pretty um, challenging uh, concept for homeowners as well as uh, just people in town as we're looking at it all. And so we have we changed it in June to from kilowatt hours to um, square footage, and that's um, and and actually that 660 square foot relates to, as I recall, the Massachusetts um, uh, state of uh, Commonwealth um, requirements. Uh, let's see, what is it? It's the um, <clears throat> Department of Public Utilities um, maximum allowed is 10 kilowatt hours. I don't know, Anne Mary, if you have anything else to add to that. Uh, it was in terms of output and the <clears throat> language has been changed to square foot to match mass state regs. That's how they um, define it. Thank you. It's not a very big piece of solar, is it? 600 well, I just, I mean, 20, solar 30. is such a moving target, Yeah. right? I mean, you could have a big roof you know, and get, you know I, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's everything. It changes so fast with technology. And then you can also have, I know some of the issues that we're concerned with no setback on them and issues that were used brought to be, used to be years on ground years. mounted in your backyard was, a, was another challenge. So, and that's what this is about, right? This is ground mounted. Uh, yes. The 660 is ground mounted and in a residence, one could have ground mounted as well as rooftop, as long as your property is sited so that it would allow the solar. And also these these bylaws do mention that if you wanted to have more than 650, 660, you could um, come to the planning board for a um, site plan review. That's obviously more cumbersome, but in, in uh, Mr. Sokoloski, in honor in answer to your question, 660 is even less than half of a tennis court. So it's not very big. Well, and so a, a special permit, there wouldn't be any need if they wanted to go beyond 660, they would go to you. Correct. For site plan review. Uh, for site plan review. No, no, no special permit required. No, but oh, by right. Could you have more than one 660 unit on a piece of property? No, it's not without a site plan review. You can't do it as a condo? Correct. <sighs> There's a hand up. Used to be yeah, yeah, go ahead. Uh, it's important to note that um, you can't put um, a system on your house or in your yard that will um, uh, <clears throat> provide more energy than you can use. Um, as far as I know, unless you want to go completely off the grid and have a whole other circumstance, if you're just talking about small scale ground or um, roof mounted, um, you are ve very regulated in how much you can put up and it's based on your usage, not how much you want to put up. Mr. Decker. Mr. Chairman. Years ago, you couldn't put a house up in Deerfield unless you had 720 square footage. That was the minimum size, the max minimum size you can build a house in Deerfield. I don't know that that exists today, but you know it wasn't very big. Well, you'd have what? Only a couple extra feet. Yeah. Uh, you wanted to talk about the municipal frontage uh, requirement at all? Anybody? I think it's. 
I think it's uh, something that the town should have the ability to to have that. And uh, prior to uh, this table being put in a few years ago, uh, municipalities could build basically do anything they wanted. But it, it's been a lot more restricted since that thing has been set up. Uh, I know why it's being proposed. It's being proposed to basically to be able to develop the North Main Street property for less money because you won't have to run a street in there and then use up all extra space with a cul-de-sac and everything else just to comply with the subdivision regulations because it doesn't have 100 feet of frontage. Right. And uh, I can see where it, the, the Leary lot, as far as I'm concerned, is probably a, a grandfathered lot. Uh, Jerry Fortier's lot that was owned by uh, Jerry Fortier before he sold it to, to the people from Leader was a grandfathered lot. I understand that there's some negotiations where people want to uh, do some swap and come in with some, uh, be able to put a roadway in to the Leary lot and around. I, I think it's probably in the best interest of town to allow it. I agree. I and, think that, you know, there's some real strong um, work going on to try to accommodate senior housing as well. And I think that this would may, uh, have the ability to benefit that. This would, on, on not, on, not in, you know, not on necessarily on Braeburn. I know that's a, a, a rough situation, but in other areas of town. So. There are other ways to access Braeburn uh, by buying some of the properties on North Main Street and gaining access. Uh, whether people are going to be receptive to want to sell or not, I don't know. But uh, there are properties there that you would uh, you could access that property and, and do it probably to a very beneficial interest to the town as a whole. Okay, uh, Ms. Remillard had her hand up first. And uh, Mr. Chair, I just wanted to say um, I support the the frontage um, change. I think there's you know in reviewing some of the presentation that the senior housing committee has come up with all of these parcels throughout the community that Deerfield you know has ownership of um, even if it's not specifically for the senior housing piece definitely with the um, the lot issue um, you know the, the select board talked about uh, creating that where the Leary lot in and out and then um, with the other changes, I think that it's only beneficial to the community to have usage because otherwise you're having a lot of lots of property that aren't tax producing tax revenue that are just going vacant owned by the community and the community has no benefit um, from that. So I'm in support of it. Yeah, uh, my question is, um, thinking back to town meeting, there there was um, uh, essentially a rejection of this idea, as, as I recall. And I'm wondering if this is different, and if so, how? Yeah, so I'm it, looking at you. Annalee, sure, we'll hear you uh, on this. Sure. My understanding, you're, you're correct, David, and I, I believe the difference is that in town meeting, <clears throat> the 50 foot frontage was for all properties in Deerfield and they, you know, the select board listened to the resistance to that and has brought it back down to just, uh, I believe it's just the CRVD and uh, C1 districts. So it's just those districts. Thank you. CVRD. <laughs> back in the 60s, right? You only need 50 feet of frontage. Well, some people say everything just goes around and around. You just got to wait long enough. So. In fact, the state law says you can build a house on a lot that had 50 feet, 5,000 square. Yeah. In fact, I think you can maybe build a two-family. As long uh, as it existed then. Okay. So, Unless someone wants to propose a motion otherwise, I think we're kind of on the same page that we're going to leave the uh, comments alone for the tourism overlay district proposal because it's not yet complete. We don't have the right mapping and we don't know what's going to be changed. Um, I would imagine that might be the same for the other two 
although maybe less controversial, maybe not. At the, those public hearings are all also on Monday. So if it's in the interest of the board to have a meeting before special town meeting, I'm open to that. If not, I'm open to our setting up our meeting date on the regular um, third, second, uh, Thursday of, of October. I think it would probably be a good idea to have a meeting the before that town meeting. Yeah, Mr. Chair. Um, yeah, Ms. Rowler. I agree with Mr. Decker. Um, I have some concerns about the size of the, um, the buildings proposed under by right um, in that tourism overlay district, you know, there's been so much pushback about 4,000 square feet and going larger. And then you see 150,000 square feet, or um, I believe is what's on the website. I don't know if verbiage has been changed, but um, I definitely would like to hear more at the planning meeting and, um, you know, find out more about that because I think constituents, um, in particular areas may have issues, especially with the traffic, um, flooding, and some other pieces. So just to know exactly where that delineation is, um, because I think it's important that while, yes, there is site plan overview and there probably is the CP, um, you know, the wetlands information provided, there are some things I think the ZBA should still um, have to issue a special permit for. Well, the powers to be have decided on the other alternative, and that's why the thing is being proposed. Uh, you saw what the opposition was to the previous zoning applications where there was a building of 9,000 square feet. You yep. had 1,000 people finding conditions. So, you know, I think the planning board needs to have some more uh, people need to know what's going on, and I don't necessarily think that they actually understand the ramifications of the tourism district and all the other things that are happening. So, uh, I think uh, once the planning board meets, they'll decide whether or not they're going to move forward uh, with anything in town meeting. They may decide to scrap it and work on it and bring it back in the spring, uh, which is usually what happens uh, or has happened in the past in several. Uh, zoning proposals that have taken place over the last 50 years and uh but right now i don't know whether it would pass but it might because there's a group that basically is probably for this but i don't know that it will pass if everybody understands what's being proposed um i mean the other question is yeah miss miss ramar go ahead and then i have something too that i mean that is more feedback just for the planning board too I was just going to say, um, because I didn't have ample time to read the entire three pieces of information, it does say notwithstanding anything contained in section 2200 to the contrary. So I'm wondering if that wordage and maybe um, Anne, um, Anna Lee or Anne Mary can clear that up if that is specific, um, you know, with getting that ZBA permit over the 4,000 square feet. Um, still maintaining that because that that's I guess that's my biggest concern. Jennifer, which section are you referring to? Um, so under 4954 on the first page of the tourism overlay district in A, it says by right uses the following uses shall be permitted by right within the TOD as either primary or accessory uses notwithstanding anything contained in section 2200 to the contrary. Um, so how it has under the craft establishment, I just wanna make sure that because it's 150,000 gross square feet, that's obviously substantially larger than the traditional 4,000 square feet. I just wanna make sure that, you know, they would still have to come in front of the ZBA um, to get that permit. Almost four acres. Thank you. I just want clarification. Um, you know, I haven't really had a lot of time to dig into all of this. No, and the other thing that it does is it opens up that other property in that area specifically for by right 
tourism things, and I'm not necessarily taking the CNC either way, but that circumvents the special permit process. It also has a great impact on the value of the property. And, you know, I think if we're going to have tourism, that's, you know, five and ten is the right place to do it, but we shouldn't leave historic Deerfield out. I mean, that is what started tourism long before Yankee Candle being in town. So, um, you know, there's property up there that, that could be, you know, things could change and it, it might be, you know, beneficial in the long term to include that. The other thing that is, um, is a thought is some of the, the uh, bylaws that were passed in regard to the uh, square footage um, for development there might need to be an amendment to to um, exempt municipal property there to help with senior housing and the expansion of the library if people are still thinking of that because of where they're situated. You remember when uh, the Tilton block was there, Anna? Or are you too no, young? No, I'm only 36. <laughs> <laughs> the Tilton block was between the, the Congregational Church and the Tilton Library. I remember cleaning the Tilton Library as a kid with my father. That was one of the Saturday morning jobs. We cleaned the library. At, you took over Ray Bradley's job. Yep. And then we cleaned the library in Waitley on Saturday mornings. Um, inside. So that's where I know how to vacuum excellent because of that. Oh, I'm glad. I was right after it, probably four or five years old. So um, I labor. I was volunteering. Oh, okay. You got an ice cream cone? No, no, <laughs> no. Um, but I do remember the coal stove in the basement of the library before they took that out. Yeah. The before they the renovated it for the children's the, area downstairs. The stairway that went down from the second, the so-called first floor to the lower level. Yeah, and the coal stove, which yeah. was pretty interesting. So, um, anybody have anything else? Uh, what, when do you think we should have the meeting? Uh, before the yeah. special town meeting is planning board. That's going to, that's going to, they're going to, town meeting is going to be the 5th of October, or 4th of October. It's the 4th. Right? Yeah, it's that Monday. Yeah, that, that's going to be, uh, we have to meet the, September 30th is a Thursday. If you like Thursday, yeah, you're gonna have to meet on September 30th. Probably. Well, we're well. I think we need to meet before that. Well, we're they're asking us to give comment or feedback to the planning board, not to the. Okay. I I'm uh, not sure that we do give comment, but I'm more than happy to have this discussion again at a at a meeting and do whatever the board wants to do as a whole. I think it's too big of an issue to ignore, and yeah. we have to make sure that we. We stay focused on it because uh, if we don't, the people are going to complain that oh, we didn't really understand what was happening. And I think people really need to understand the long-term implications and you know the worst case and the best case scenarios on, on these things. And uh, well, it's just it's it's tough because these by bylaw changes usually don't happen so frequently and so fast. And so fast. Um, historically, the bylaws are set for a substantial period of time. You know, they haven't really been tweaked very much, in a lot, except in the last year or so. But prior to that, they weren't being tweaked that often. No, not often at all. But can we just talk about a date? Yeah, we can talk about a date. Sure. We have a hand up too. I just want to say that a lot of the bylaws were really old. <laughs> and <laughs> needed to be tweaked. So that's why they're getting tweaked. Some of the bylaws that exist today were, were there when Dick Kalachewski and I, and Mr. Olmstead, were on the planning board uh, many, many years ago. Yeah, they yeah. need to be updated. So back to my question, can we settle on a day talk about Yeah, go, 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 go for it. Sense of, uh, we want to wait so we have the final product and I, I would think yeah so that was my inclination to pick that last minute date but um you know or maybe we're supposed to uh, well I, the, the the warrant for a special town meeting has to be posted 
uh, and I'm lucky enough to get to post them as my elected constable duties and um, two weeks prior to the meeting. So if the meeting's on the 4th, I would imagine that Barb will want it posted on the 17th. She might, that might not happen, but it would, cause she usually likes to be ahead. It, the latest it can be posted is the 20th. Yeah. And you're saying by that date, it should be crafted and. Well, unless they're going to put a motion in. Well, the final, I mean, unless they're going to motion it, right? Cause you can, they can motion it. They have to submit a report to town meeting after after the public hearing and explain what changes took place and what happened they can do it orally they don't have to necessarily do it in writing but they have to submit a report to town meeting that is going to be sent to the attorney general if they pass if it gets passed but you know i really think they're they're trying to compact this too much and uh maybe maybe people will go along with it but there's a lot of people that are going to resist the a big change at a special town meeting. They're going to want to come back to um, annual town meeting. And Mr. Chair? Not... Sorry. Go on. Yeah. Sorry, Bob. Go I Sorry, Bob. I didn't know you were still talking. Um, I was just going to say, um, Anna Lee, could you clarify your, your planning board meeting is on the 13th, and are there any additional meetings that week? That before you come up with your final um, product for the warrant? And no, and uh, Mr. Chair, and uh, Amanda, yeah. yes. unless we decide to continue the hearing, which I think is doubtful given the time frame of everything, we would vote um, after public comment. We would close public comment, have our deliberations, and vote for the articles that would go forward to the town warrant okay thank you any anybody else yeah, yeah. so i guess why why would we meet after that if that's crafting the final thing and we're not giving comment that can be integrated or considered i feel like we've given our comment now they've heard us or on the public hearing yeah, I mean, there you can. We could still. I mean, we could. I just. I don't want to give any board member. I don't want to let any board member feel as though that they don't have the opportunity to speak to these. And and okay. I wanted to make sure that everybody has it. And I see both sides of it. I I see. I see the opportunity to make a statement either as an individual, and we have a platform here. As an individual, people do watch these meetings online and and stuff. So I I think that it's valuable. I think it's valuable for the planning board, you know, to hear us as individuals and as board members, as any town resident. So I just want to give the board the opportunity to schedule a meeting and before. And I mean, the timing is it is tight timing because of when it's going to be posted and when it's going to be. We could do a meeting on you know September 20th or 21st and. We may decide that we want to make a statement or we may decide that we don't or we can make a statement that we're not, you know, we're happy with this and not happy with that. And it is what it is. So. Um, but did I just understand that the board meeting tomorrow? What's on the agenda for tomorrow? The agenda for tomorrow. So the, the agenda for tomorrow is just for us to um, address that we also need to put a map on the town meeting warrant, which requires its own special public hearing. But that map, in fact, will mirror whatever we decide on the 13th. So now when is the public hearing on the map, tomorrow? No, tomorrow no, is just a meeting to um, approve the language that would go forward for a public hearing. That public hearing would most likely be October or September 29th or 30th so i'm not sure how that fits in with as you were talking earlier about uh publishing the warrant i mean the warrant right now will as i understand it have some map verbiage but that may or may not be the same verbiage that we decide uh, after the 13th so i don't know how that's going to work out you know all i can think is this would be so much cleaner 
they, they have an open dialogue and back and forth and, and set it up for annual town meeting so everybody actually understands and you can work all the kinks off. But that's not for me to decide. I just think that it's No, I I don't know how you can sorry to interrupt you, Bob, but or you know you gotta have a clear map for the public hearing, I would think, so everybody has the opportunity to know what what the mapping is. But I mean, th these things are outside of my realm of knowledge, just common sense wise, you would think that you have to have the map before the public hearing or at least at the public hearing. But I don't know, there's all these well, nuances about things that are, you know. <laughs> the big thing is once it's, once the map is proposed and, and out in legal notice, uh, town meeting can't really change the map substantially. Okay, they can make minor changes, but I don't think they can make substantial changes to it. So what could end up happening is because they can't put a substantial change in, it might have the whole thing go down the tube. If, if there's a, a, a third plus one that wants to vote against it. So I, I don't know. I just think it'd be better coming back in the spring where you worked all the kinks out, but that's entirely up to your board. You have seven people that are very knowledgeable that are there. Thank you. Okay, so do we want to pick a date to have a meeting before the special town meeting? Anybody? Mr. Chair, the only comment yeah. I would ask is if we meet and we issue a statement, is that going to have any effects for town meeting if they've already had everything on the warrant established and all of that? I mean, like, I know that the finance committee meets and makes comment on you know for things but will it make a difference that's my only question i can't answer that i don't think is anything against you know i i don't i can't weigh how other people view us i don't know uh miss go, go ahead You're i do recall Emily. at a previous town meeting um, in relation, I think, to the purchase of the additional park property that uh, people from all the different committees, the chairs, got up and spoke and said what their committee uh, opined on. So that, to me, was pretty forceful at that town meeting. Chair? John, go ahead. Yeah, I, you know, I think we should have a meeting. We should set a date. And I think our comments are should be more directed to the town meeting rather than the planning board. I think we've given some of the comments from the rough draft that has been before us, but I think uh, it's it's important for the plant for the town townspeople to know what the zoning board thinks of these, because if if everybody is unanimous in supporting them, it might make it pretty easy if there is uh disagreements it, it focuses on what those disagreements are so I, I think i think it's important that we consider weighing in depending upon what the final product is so i think a date should be after uh, the planning board finalizes what they intend to put on the warrant Ready? Seven o'clock. Yeah. Uh, 30th. I was thinking the week of the 20th. I, I am open to input. I know uh, the week, the 16th, I got a cemetery commissioners meeting and I'm doing some other stuff in the evening. That, so that week doesn't, I'm pretty booked up. Uh, 20th through the 23rd, I'm open. If we could keep and then Thursday. Yep. So I'm open to the 30th too of September. The 23rd is okay for me and the 30th. Maybe the 23rd is better, a little ahead of it. I don't know. The 23rd, 23rd works for me. Know. Yeah, I'm okay with the 23rd as well. Okay. Um, we'll go with the 23rd at um, 7, and we'll have uh, this put on the agenda. If there is an issue with the town hall, whether there is an issue with meeting room space, um, or FCAT or something like that, would we prefer just to go to the 30th? 
that would work for me. Yeah, either of those yeah. dates. That's fine as an alternate date. All right, I will uh, speak with the town hall staff about setting that up. Um, and then they'll email out the agenda in a normal fashion. Make sure, we make sure that we get all the information that the planning board has scooped up as the comments and, and what have you, so we have that information available to us so that we're. Well, I don't want to put too much on the town hall staff as far as organizational, but the stuff that's submitted to the planning board in the minutes from the planning board meeting, uh, we should have that available so we can see what the comments were, et cetera. So that okay, I'll, I'll ask for that. I just want to remind all the board members that it's on the most of the stuff's on the website in a timely ma manner, and hopefully this will be. Uh, if you click on the planning board tab, um, there's stuff up there, and. Um, <laughs> I'm sure um, Sue can help help somebody if they need some help coming in, and the um, planning board meet meetings are as well as ours are usually put up on to uh, FCAT's YouTube channel pretty quick within a couple of days at the latest. So I would encourage board members to watch those, or and feel free as individuals to attend the uh, public hearing. Please, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> for the 20th tomorrow. The 23rd, Thursday the 23rd. 23rd. Okay. I'm going to I'm going to ask town hall if they can accommodate that for us at 7 p.m. on Thursday the 23rd to I'll talk about okay. these of September. We should give you the discretion to find a different date if those two days don't work. Right, and my second option would be the 30th. Well, I think I have that. If that doesn't work, just I'll just so we can work it. Work it. Yeah. All right, I move we adjourn. Okay. Uh, may, may, I, may I have a uh, be heard on a, ma a matter of other business? Uh, yeah, as long as it's somewhat in line with what's on the agenda, I, I'm fine with that. Um, so, uh, th and and it is because it it pertains to potentially a uh, amendment to our our bylaws. Um, so uh, I wanted to start a discussion uh, in the on this board about uh, the process and procedure of the of of what happened at the Dollar General uh, hearings, and and what I'd like to do is propose to, to actually start talking about a new uh, change to our bylaws that would require any applicant that has to appear before a number of boards to have the board decision, whether it be planning board, conservation commission, uh, be decided before a public hearing would be closed with the ZBA. Um, the, the, the rationale is that um, I think uh, Dollar General kind of gamed our system, that, uh, that there is a flaw in it where uh, one of our uh, one of the criteria that we have to decide on is the environmental impact, um, but part of that is in the purview of the conservation commission. Um, we decide on the detriments versus the benefits. Uh, both the planning board and the conservation commission decide on whether the, an applicant has met the uh, procedural requirements of our bylaws um, to come before. The zoning board of appeals, before those boards have have rendered a, an opinion, the final decision, uh, really puts a very puts us in a tough position, as we probably all felt. Um, and this last go around with the Dollar General, it caused a lot of divisiveness in town. There was a lot of effort spent by this board and by other boards and by the town hall. And it would have been uh, potentially uh, not, it would not have occurred if the process was to go through the other town boards. And if there is a special permit on top of the other permits that are required, we are the last permit granting authority. Um, now, I, I recall bringing this up in the hearings because I've asked why are they here now? And, and uh, our attorney said, because that's what your bylaws permit them to do. I don't know, um, I didn't do the legal research, I'm not, a, I'm not a land use lawyer, whether we can require that. 
So that that before before we even go down the road of kind of talking about it, um, I see somebody's hand raised that 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 I'd like to know that that it's something that it's legal to consider legal to do. And I and I'd like to kind of start a discussion so we don't go through all this again to find out there's some problem with the Conservation Commission and they shouldn't have been before us in the first place. So they wouldn't have got up. They wouldn't have got a decision and a, a positive decision out of the town. Uh, I know it's a lot, but we're talking about zoning bylaws. I mean, I'm not looking to put the, to suggest this go before the October meeting, but to, to, to make sure this what happened at the Dollar General hearings it does never happen to Deerfield again. Go ahead. Um, I have to agree with John. I think uh, from my recollection, from personal experience, uh, living in Northampton, you had to get um, certain other committees or plant boards within town's approval before you could go to the ZBA for that special permit. Um, I may be misremembering wrong on that, but I, I'm pretty certain that, you know, that would not be illegal for the town to change the bylaw to have that reflected. I think, um, John brings up a really good point with that comment because I think that we would have um, alleviated litigation, um, which would have saved money, time, and aggravation, um, especially for our board, you know, and, and seeing what um, Mr. Sadowski went through as the chair for that. Um, and I, I think it's a good proposal. I think it's something that, you know, if we're in the process of a of amending and changing our application process, it would be, um, it would coincide with, with that as well. I mean, obviously it's a bylaw change, but um, it doesn't seem like it's a, a major one, obviously, you know, speaking to council and everything else. Um, but I think having all of the permits from all of the authorities to come for and then come forward to us, um, while it may create some kind of a delay for certain things, um, I think it would be minimal. And I think it would alleviate a lot of headaches down the road, especially if we get larger um, corporations or businesses coming into the community. Mr. Chairman. Uh, I just have one thing and then there was a hand up and then me and Mr. Decker. Uh, I believe proposing a bylaw is outside of our jurisdiction so we would have to either ask our friends on the planning board, do a citizen's petition, or ask the select board for that bylaw change. Um, that's where, where that goes. Now, and the other problem becomes is if an applicant has an approval from any board and they approve it, and then they come to us following this new bylaw, and then something else is found and then there's either a state oversight board or there's legal action, we're right back in the same boat or does the process stop? I would think, so if you, I would think at least the way I would envision it is that the, the, all the hearings could go simultaneously so that, uh, so that a project isn't unduly delayed because of having to start a, a beginning at the planning at the ZBA, but that there has to be a final decision from uh, any of the other boards in town. And I'm thinking mostly conservation commission and planning board. And that means final decision, whether if they go to court and somebody wants to appeal it, we can't, we wouldn't be able to close our public hearing until there is a final decision. So we'd close our public hearing and we could vote that day. but. Uh, but but it'd have to be final action on any of any of permit applications, and in that way we would know for sure we wouldn't be dealing with lawsuits. All the lawsuits would be done when by the time we'd look at it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I don't really even I've never gotten a clear explanation of what happened with Dollar General from anybody in any type of authority uh, from the town. I've got nothing in writing. I have no idea what happened. Uh, how that was, what it cost us. I have, I've gotten nothing. I haven't dug too hard or filed a FOIA or anything, but, um, you know, I, I don't know. But anyways, uh, 
I believe there's another hand up. Did I see a hand up? Yeah, go ahead. Hi again. Um, so in speaking with um, the town council um, in dealing with Dollar General, it was mentioned several times that there are um, models of both, right? Of a serial, right? And a simultaneous. And he said that both are, um, ours is less common, um, but what John is speaking to and what Jennifer is speaking to and what uh, Bob Decker is speaking to uh, is absolutely lawful is, according to our own town council and um, might be the recommended you know, path to take for all the reasons. But I just wanted to clarify that, yeah, it's absolutely a model that happens already and it's, it's totally lawful. Yeah, I, 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 I get that it's lawful. Um, it's just we don't have bylaw creating authority. The ZBA that I'm aware. Of. Everybody does. Well, right through through petition. petition. Well, well, petition is one. You can submit it to the board of selectmen and ask them to put it up. Right. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Yeah. A little bit of history. It's, I don't know if Mr. Staberski understands it. Maybe he does. Maybe he doesn't. Uh, there were two applications filed by Dollar General. Okay, one was filed the same time it was filed with the planning board for site plan review. There was no action taken by the by the, the zoning board on that application. It was later withdrawn by the petitioner, and they refiled. Okay, just history. Okay, uh, they filed both at the same time, but there was no action taken by the zoning board. Uh, on that first application. Okay. Yeah. I, I, so I know I've seen it. Yeah, I don't. Okay. So I guess. Uh, so so maybe John, what you I'm have, asking if we don't if we don't if we don't have the uh, the ability to suggest bylaws. Uh, we do have the ability to suggest. We don't have the ability to just do one. Oh, I wouldn't. We can. You know, I wouldn't yeah. suspect we would ever have the ability to do one. It's more of a recommendation from the zoning board of appeals uh you know since we all went through that morass that um that that i think it's incumbent upon us to to see to make sure it doesn't happen again i mean i don't know if you guys uh, i don't know how the rest of the board feels about whether they want to uh, go through an experience like that again to find out if it was all for not um and, well, it says it, 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 and I, I agree with you, John. You know, it's like that. Well, that was rough. You know, I had people standing in front of my house with signs. You know, and and I get it, and um, and that's fine. I, I mean, but uh, I think your idea makes a hundred percent sense. But we also have a push in town for expedited development. So you know, there's there's a push for that as well. So how do you find that happy medium? I mean, we we're able to work through Treehouse, you know, in short order, uh, one meeting, you know, so depending on what the proposal is, you know, should, should it be, a, you know, but I, I agree that the special permit, I mean, shouldn't issue, but you'd keep the public hearing open. I mean, for how long, you know, after everybody's appeal process is up, I mean, You'd have to take a look at that on, you know, how far are you delaying, you know, and we had the whole COVID year that was a whole big delay too, but, you know, how much the things change. But I'm 100% open to seeing something put in writing that we can vote on and send to the select board for annual town meeting in the spring. I don't think it's anything that's going to be possibly done for the special town meeting. No, I'm, I'm not suggesting. To to having the planning board and the conservation commission finish what they're doing as long as uh, they get 160 days to do it. And after that, uh, you know, we should be able to move along with whatever we have to do because uh, there was, that thing existed in the, in the works with the planning board for a good year before there was anything taken up at the zoning board. Right. And you know, you can't continue it forever and ever. You, you have to move it along at some point in time. And, uh, but, you know, that's my point. If, if it, I don't mind delaying the zoning board action on a permit 
and just putting it on the shelf for until the 120 days has passed or 160 days or whatever number you want to come up with before we, we take up the application. But uh, we need to put a time frame on it. Otherwise, uh, it could last forever. It could go for five years. How long did Dollar General go? Too long. Two and a half, three years? Is that, <laughs> or is it longer? It's a long time. Right, and now we're still dealing with their repercussions. Oh, we're going to feel the impulse of it going forward. Uh, maybe good, maybe bad. I don't know. We'll find out. We'll deal with it. But uh, anyway. Well, I wanted Anybody to get out? I just wanted to get the sentiment of the board. I mean, I could try to write something up or look at other bylaws that other towns have done. Uh, and put a period of 120 days on it before we have to take action. Uh, I don't. I don't you know. think you can do that with, with the way this is envisioned, because you need a final decision, yep. and you need to keep it open. For, for example, like how the DEP issued that letter after you know during the midst of our hearing, and we had closed the public hearing. I mean, things can come up in litigation, and and who knows what comes up. Our, our we we should not close our hearing until we have the final decision oh, yeah. for everybody. It's like, not really need the Dollar General, but in the future when we have it, we render a decision on, or come to a consensus on what the decision is going to be on a particular night, we need not to close the public hearing or close the thing at, that night, but to, to have the decision drafted and we come back in and we approve the decision so that we don't have to uh, accept the way it's typed. Well, you know, the, the other thing we should do is have a, if we're going to have a decision, we should have it before our meeting and not, and it's right, if it's drafted by an attorney. That's to my point. Yeah. That's, that's my point. Well, those are two changes that I'm kind of uh, want to clean up uh, our procedural kind of issues. Um, uh, but I thought we should think about those and, and give us a long time to think about it before the next town meeting. So I just thought I'd put that out there. Okay, uh, Mr. Decker made a motion to adjourn. Uh, oh, Miss Annalee, you, you have a... Um, just to let you know that the planning board at times has talked about having sequential movements through the committees also. So I think this is something we would be very supportive of. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Mr. Decker has a motion to adjourn. Does it, anybody want to second that? Second. No, you didn't, because it's not debatable. Okay. It's been seconded by John Stavarsky. You got that, Alex? Yep. All those in favor? Aye. You got to do a roll call because it's hybrid? I do have to do a roll call, yes, because it's our second vote. Mr. Decker? Yes. David Potter, aye. Adam, yes. Alex, yes. Jennifer, yes. John? Yes. yes. Okay. We are adjourned. Thank We're you. adjourned. Thank you, folks. Thank you.